here with Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Michael Cunningham. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for it's having me. It's a pleasure me. to meet you. Likewise. And uh, first of all, I want to talk about By Nightfall. I mean, this was an addictive read, I found. Oh, like, I'm very glad to hear that. It was one of those books that, you know, I started reading it and I had to go to the end. I had, I think I read it in two evenings. It was such a great, excellent oh, read. Oh, you know how to make a novelist happy. <laughs> Now, with By Nightfall, you make reference, obviously, to Thomas Mann's Death in Venice. Yes. Um, now, you use it as a bit of a narrative arc. Tell us why you were drawn to this you know, particular story. You know, Death in Venice is one of my favorite books, period. I, I, I actually, I have it tattooed all over my body, the entire text of Death in Venice. I don't, I don't actually. No, you don't. I don't actually. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. Come on, here's the first, yeah, here's the first, here's the first, first line. Um, <laughs> And one of the things that I love about Death in Venice and, and, and have for so many years is, is the sort of central fixation, the, 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 the central relationship between this older man, Gustav Aschenbach, and this, this boy to whom he never speaks, named, named, named Tazio. It is certainly a kind of erotic fixation that, that, that Aschenbach has on Tazio. But it's also about something more than just young ass. It's about beauty and ephemerality and, and what this boy represents. And I've always loved that. I've always loved the idea that you can have a crush on somebody who almost strikes you as a work of art as much as they do as a person. And so I was thinking about that when I wrote my own story of a man of a certain age who becomes fixated on a younger man. Mm. Do you find this story timeless then? Because you know it was written, of course, a while back. And do you find this story a timeless? Oh piece? sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I mean, if, if I would, I would love any any anybody who's watching who who has not or does not know somebody of a certain age who has developed a fixation on a younger man. Raise your hands. I don't <laughs> <laughs> right. that, that that story is very much still with us. Has this happened in your own life? Are these things that you can draw from, these emotions, these urges? You know, actually, no, no. I'm, 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 uh, I mean, I've certainly had fixed, I've, I've, believe me, I've had my obsessions and my, and my fixations. Um, I am probably one of relatively few gay men of a certain age who do not have a particular thing about much younger guys. Um, but you know, part of what you want to do in a novel is explore terrain that you don't occupy yourself. It, that, that's, that's part of the fun of it, to sort of take on the identity of a, of a person who's different from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, don't, I, I like young guys just fine, but I've always, I've always, I've, if anything, I'm kind of a, a gerontophile. I like, I like older guys. Mm -hmm. There's hardly anybody older than me anymore. I have to, I have to go to the rest homes, but... Uh, <laughs> and what I really loved is that you mentioned in the introduction to Death in Venice, that being a similar age to Gustav, uh, that you worried whether you ever looked a little bit Death in Venice-ish. Oh, oh, yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, I'm, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a phrase my, my boyfriend Kenny and I sort of bandy about sometimes. It, it, is, it is any sartorial gesture that's obviously meant to make you look younger than you are. Any, anything, anything that really was really meant obviously to be worn by a 25-year-old and you squeeze your 57-year-old body into it and it may fit, you know, you may be in pretty good shape, but it's just too young for you and you should take it off and give it away because it is too, yes, death in fantasy for you. <laughs> well, it's good that you recognize that. Yes. Oh, well, there's yeah. a lot of men that don't Kenny, recognize Kenny that. And, Kenny and I are on 24-7 alert for, for, I think you're a little old for that. Hmm. Bulletins. I mean, I intend to remain sexual until I'm a hundred. Um, I don't. I, I, I don't think you have to give it up at a certain age. But I do think this is my this is my my personal sartorial philosophy. Past a certain age, you should you should dress with a certain modesty. It's just it's just not about mesh tank tops. Even if you even if you're in great shape at fifty, give it up, boys. Put on the suit. You'll do better. <laughs> As a gay man, are you afraid of aging? Who isn't afraid of aging? But give, or let's 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 say who doesn't think about mortality. Um, I do. 
I, I certainly do. Um, but uh, no, no, no. I'm 57 years old. I'm about to be 58. I feel great. Um, I refuse, really, to approach the aging process as, 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 some, kind of, as some kind of defeat. Um, sometimes I'd like to go back and talk to myself at 25 and say, relax, have more fun, don't worry so much. But that makes me aware of the fact that sitting right next to me right now, though invisible, is myself at 85, whispering into my ear, 57, laugh it up, love it. Mm -hmm. And next to him is, is me at 120, but that, that, guy, that guy's still too far away to hear. Do you find like being my age and being your age now, what do you like better? Um, I, feel, I feel, given that I was really a mess, how old are you? 25. 25. Okay, when I was 25, I was so uncomfortable in my own skin. I was so nervous about never amounting to anything. I was trying to be a writer, but no one seemed to be taking me seriously. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hell in a handbasket. Um, I can't stand the way I look. Um, and I do feel much more comfortable about that stuff now. Um, not a great beauty, never have been, don't need to be. I'm happy with my work, I'm happy with my boyfriend. Um, there's stuff, there's always stuff. It's not, it's, it's not, like, it's not like I'm like whistling Dixie all the time. But, um, wow, if you don't get older with a certain sense of having accumulated some kind of stability and courage and even joy that you may have had trouble with decades ago, You've missed something. Mm. There has to be something about getting older. It can't all be lost. It isn't all lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Michael. My pleasure. Thank yes, you. Yes, nice to meet you. Likewise.